Good morning, everybody. I've got great information. I just recently attended a Stephen Covey seminar, and there is nothing that Stephen Covey preaches or to, or sells uh, that all of us can't use for any part of our business. I took as many notes as I could, and I want to start sharing some of those things with you. Last month, we focused on the USAA, and we talked about that there were things that we couldn't really control that were happening in the processing center. And then we talked about what we could control and how we could overcome some of the issues that they were having. And that produced results. And success is determined by focusing on what we can and cannot control. And, or I'm sorry, focusing on what we can control. Great example, we still had problems. We still had a lot of problems but we did the best that we could with them and with 225 contracts I was actually pleasantly surprised at how we handled it not what happened how we handled it and how we moved those transactions forward Stephen Covey says that a lot of us will spend time on our strategy and unfortunately we don't spend enough time on our execution we think that we're spending time on execution because we're working hard and we're doing a lot of things, but we're not actually doing the specific things that were outlined when we did our strategy. And strategy really means nothing without execution. What would prevent us from executing? Well, number one, in any kind of, of execution, you usually are calling for a change in behavior. And a change in behavior is hard. You've got to form a habit. You got to do the right activities to form that habit, and you got to do it for a significant period of time if you want it to, to really take hold. Why would we not focus? I mean, that sounds like a simple thing. I'm focused, aren't I? Well, not all the time. And what keeps me from being focused all the time is the whirlwind of life. And the whirlwind of life acts upon me. It is the day-to-day -day stuff that happens. It's the customers, it's the contracts, it's the phone calls, it's the things in your family. And they take us away from our focus on our really important goals. When we're focused on our important goals, we're acting upon life and we're acting upon and going after the results that we want. When we're caught up in the whirlwind, life is acting upon us and the chances of, of remaining focused and getting where we need to go dwindle greatly. Unfortunately, human nature is urgency will win every time. And the whirlwind of life is sitting there right in front of you and it's urgent. And our focus on our goals is something that is more of a habit. It's a change in behavior. It's something that we have to focus on. Let's talk really quickly about time management. Here's the facts as Stephen Covey sees them. And this is probably true for, uh, it's true in, in terms of looking at a sales organization, looking at the type of customers that you're working with, or looking at uh, the type of activities that you're doing. 20% of activities will really produce unbelievable results. 60% of activities are have great potential. And 20% really have none. And you could you could probably look at the customers that come in the exact same way. What happens? Well, these are so obvious that we have a tendency to spend more time on there than what's really needed. Top performers in terms of a client base might be the people who are coming in on a Friday. Uh, they're leaving on Sunday. They're moving here in 30 days. Pretty much if we do our job, we got a good chance of selling them something. What's a great potential? Great potential might be a corporate relocation where they've got to sell a house and they're not going to come here for another year but they're going to be here in a weekend and then we've got to follow up with them for a period of time so that they don't forget about us low performing it's what we were talking about you know it's focusing on you know what people should or shouldn't be doing instead of saying hey here's how it is and how can I get through this faster so what's our goal our goal really should be to spend 20% of our time with our top performers. That seems counter, but when you think about it, that person that comes in that's really the true, hot, great, perfect lead, they don't require as much of our time. And unfortunately, we have a tendency to sacrifice the great potential time, and that's where we need to get back to. And great potential time is not just relocation. Great potential time 
can also mean that uh, in the dead of summer when we've got tons of leads and tons of contracts and all these things going on, how much time have we spent on our SOI, marketing to them and producing referrals for ourselves, and how is that going to set us up for the winter? And finally, who wouldn't want to produce, reduce the amount of time that they're spending in low-performing tasks? Same thing goes when we're talking about our goals for lead distribution. You've heard us say life is not fair. We want the leads going to those who statistically perform. And we certainly want to look at everyone that's sitting in the room. If you're in the room, you are not a low performer. Uh, but there are certainly brand new agents who just come onto the A-team who we're not going to load up with tons and tons of leads. We want you to get good at this. We want you to be focused on that client. We want you to, uh, to prove that you should get an unfair share amount. And when you prove it, you will. Culture. Uh, you know, top performers value the business. They're focused on service. They're organized. They control their schedules. They work with a wide range of personalities. Tough. Not everybody can do that. They're great communicators. They're knowledgeable about their skill and about their market. They're team players with their branch leaders in office. They know their limits. They envision all of the future referrals that the person sitting across from them could give them. And they have an all-in attitude. All of us, I hope, are striving to improve. All of us, I hope, are dedicated to using systems to be organized. All of us, I hope, appreciate the coaching and the training that's available in this company and utilize it and have that all-in attitude. None of us should be the type of people who would complain without providing any solutions. None of us should be the type of people that don't attend the trainings that are mandatory. And none of us should think that we constantly know a better way. We should look around the room and say, I can get better by being here and by listening to others. Stephen Covey says that there are a lot of steps to success. One of them is that you have to have wildly important goals or wigs. And he says that the number of wigs that you have are really important. If you have only two to three really wildly important goals, then you will do two to three of them with excellence. If you have four to ten, you actually reduce the number of goals that you'll do with excellence, and it will probably be a maximum of two. If you have more than ten, you will not do anything with excellence. So it's the old rule, keep it simple, stupid. Stay focused on a couple of things and you'll do them really well. Great example, droids have 30 phones that are available, Blackberry's 12, the iPhone has only one. You can get it in black or white, but it's the same phone. That simple solution has produced $40 billion worth of sales last year. So goals are one thing, you've got to have sub-goals. How do you simplify and take your business down to one goal? Well, you've got to have sub-goals. So we've talked about providing excellent service. We're going to talk about that later. Well, in order to provide excellent service, you've got to have sub-goals. Sub-goals might be, I've got to be highly prepared and organized. I've really got to understand the needs of the client. I've got to communicate expectations to them. And I've got to have excellent follow-up with them. These are the battles that I have to win. They're the commitments that I make, and that's what produces the success. But I also, when setting goals, have to say, hey, there's a time limit. I've got to move the needle. I've got to go from X to Y by when. Let's look at an example of that. One example was our space program before John Kennedy. Our stated goal was we are going to be leaders in space exploration. That sounds like a good goal to me. That goal produced us blowing up rocket after rocket after rocket on the launch pad. Uh, we never got into space. Sputnik, was, was the Russian satellite, was circling the Earth, and people were screaming that we were failing. So in walks John Kennedy, and this is the goal that he stated. We are going to put a man on the moon and return him safely before the end of the decade. We've got to have some sub-goals to do that. We've got our X to Y. We've got a specific goal. Well, one of the goals is we can't strap a guy to a rocket if we know there's a good chance it's going to blow up. And if we're able to fix that, our propulsion, then we're going to have to be able to figure out how to keep him alive once he gets in space. And the final thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out how to navigate to the moon and back. We can't have him getting lost up there. And, you know, if you were holding an iPhone in your hand right now, 
you have more technology in your hand than they had in the entire command center and in the ship when they landed on the moon. So it's things are always possible. Complicated is only in our minds. Stephen Covey then says that in order, once we've got our goal, we've got to focus on lead measures. What are those? Well, lag measures, right? That's actually the goal. That usually is a measured goal that we're setting. The lead measures tell us if we're doing well at getting there. And you got to have lead measures. Lead measures should be predictive of the goal, and they're the, the type of behaviors and things that we can influence. If we focus on our lead measures, they should produce the result. What's an example of that? How many people have had the goal to lose 10 pounds, and how many people have not been able to do it? Well, it's actually not that difficult of a goal for many, many people. It's just it, the, the lead measures are very difficult. Really, if you want to lose 10 pounds, then you have to do two things. You have to limit the number of calories that you have coming in. You actually have to measure that and say, whatever I'm taking in right now isn't producing the result. I need to eat less and diet, eat better things. And then I've got to do some exercise. I've got to burn more calories. If I do those two things and measure them every day for 30 days, I should be well on my way to my goal. Next, Stephen Covey says you've got to have a scorecard. People play differently when they are keeping score. So, in order to have an effective scorecard, it should be simple, should be highly visible, should have the lead and lag measures we just spoke of, and it should be updated weekly. Anybody think this looks familiar? I hope you do. I hope that you're doing this monthly with your branch leader and definitely doing it at least quarterly. And this is a simplified scorecard that looks at the things that predict success in relocation. And they predict success in more than just relocation. The object is simple. The more green we see on this card, the better we're doing. If you're doing better as an agent than your branch leader, and notice this is the branch leader's form, it looks just like yours, then the branch leader is doing better. And if our branch leaders are doing really better with all of the offices, then our company is doing better then we're taking business away from all of our local competitors because that's the way the game is played and we play it well. Fourth, create a cadence of accountability, the effective 10-minute meeting. Stephen Covey talks about this. You can have an effective 10-minute meeting and here's what it looks like. In an effective 10-minute meeting, you talk about the commitments that you made last week and you make two statements. These are the commitments that I did and these are the commitments that I did not do. Nowhere in that conversation is any excuse relevant. It's just the whirlwind of your life. It's just the things that happened that week. If it's wildly important and a really important goal, then you've got to follow through on your commitments and you've got to be honest about when you did and didn't do it. Next thing Stephen Kevy says is keep, you know, review and update your scorecard. That's going to be the one that's going to tell you if you're making progress. And finally, you're going to make the commitments for next week and make them simple and achievable for the following week. That's an effective 10 minute meeting. I know you can't have a 10 minute meeting with your manager every week, but you can look around the room right now. There's somebody in the room who you might want to choose to hold you accountable, to have a meeting with, to say, you know what? I haven't gotten my SOI where I want it to be, and that's my goal. I'm going to grow it. And this is the way I'm going to grow it. I'm going to measure how many marketing pieces I'm sending out, how many phone calls I'm making, how many appointments I get. And I want to have an effective 10-minute meeting with you. And I would encourage anyone that wants to do that to do that. It will absolutely make you more successful. How do you set an important goal? First, you set the goal. Then you define the measures. Then you make the weekly commitments. We've already talked about that. How do you succeed and actually make the goal? you go backwards. You focus on your weekly commitments. If you're doing your weekly commitments, then you should be monitoring your lead measures and you should be watching that you know, your number of active listings, your number of buyer broker agreements should be going up. There should be a measurement that's showing, hey, I'm on my way to success and I'm on my way to achieving the goal. Here's how our goals used to look. And I thought about it and said, geez, if Stephen Covey says I can only have two to three, I probably should only have two to three. Well, I had seven. But as I looked at it, I thought, well, you know what? Conversion's a goal, and I'm going to show you what that, it's, I, I changed it a little bit, but I'm going to show you what that looks like. 
you know, having outstanding and excellent customer service is a goal. And then all of these other things are actually a goal. Let me show you what that looks like. Wildly important goal number one, maximize every opportunity that is in front of us. That's a simple statement about conversion. I want to do a real estate transaction with every single opportunity that it's possible to do a real estate transaction with. The daily battles that I'm going to have to win in order to do that. I've got to have fast contact with that client. I've got to follow up and give them the things that they wanted. I've got to incubate everything that's long term. I've got to have great teamwork and communication with my branch leader. And I should be tracking my results. And if I do the, all of those things, it should lead to my goal. And there should be some measurements. For us, we want to see 41% conversion by the end of the year. We have 56% conversion in our CTE anagram overall for USAA. 66% of the buyers have converted in the last year. That's absolutely phenomenal. It means that our numbers are real. It means that they're achievable and we're going in the right direction. Lead measures. Pending contracts, final sales, looking at, hey, who actually did a trans transaction that we talked to with somebody else? Why did that happen? What do we need to do differently so it doesn't happen to us again? 10% growth. That's really my responsibility. And the way I do it is I look at my incoming leads. Are they growing? But I also know that it's going to cap out at some point. At some point, we're going to make platinum in all three of our anagrams, and we just can't grow our business anymore in the Cardis world. That hasn't happened yet, but it's going to. So I'm making sure that we have appointments with new sources. And if we have enough appointments with new sources, then they're going to start doing business with us, and I'm going to be able to grow the leads that way. Platinum in all three Cardis anagrams. We are platinum in Northern Virginia. We are not platinum in, in Maryland or in CTE. The, it's not Southern Virginia, but the Southern part of our territory. And we can be, and we're tracking so that we can do it. And we're watching it. We're saying, hey, we gotta pay attention to this Cardis quarterly tracking report, and we gotta adjust if we're missing on anything. We need to have our own company platform so that we don't have to wait a quarter to find out whether or not we're doing well, and we have that. And we've got to do the coaching forms so that everybody in the organization understands what it takes to make platinum because that's good for all of us. The one commitment that we've got to have is that we've got to believe that every opportunity is a good one. If you treat every opportunity like that up front, we will get to where we need to go. While the important goal number two, this is all that mismatch of other stuff that I've put into one goal. We've got to support those who support us, our partners, the USAAs, the Lockheed Martins, the Cardis, the Lexicons. We've got to support those people who support us so that they'll continue to choose us over the competition. So what are the sub-goals? First of all, if you're going to be somebody's partner, then you've got to be all in. You've got to be their partner. When you're speaking to their customers, you've got to speak as their partner even if they're frustrating you, even if there's problems in the mortgage world, even if there's anything, you're all in, you're their partner, you speak that way. Communication is key, right? So we've got to let our partners know what's going on with their clients. They have a right to know. They should absolutely know the moment that somebody goes under contract, you would always thank one of your own referral sources. We have to do the same with them. As Soon as somebody goes under contract, they need to know about it. As Soon as we have a final sale, We've got to roll the paperwork. There's people that need to get cash book back bonuses. There's partners that are involved. We have to be respectful and we have to win those daily battles. The lead and lag measures, we've got to have 70% of our people using the honored source and mortgage. To do that, we've got to monitor and make sure that every contract is submitted with the lender and the title. We almost always know uh, who the lender and the title is going to be or who it possibly is going to be. That information has got to be provided so that they have an opportunity to do something about it. Um, we're going to track it and look at it on our coaching forms. And we want to communicate in our updates before we ever get depending on who the lender of choice seems to be or who the title company seems to be so that those people have an opportunity to do the business. We're looking at agent generated referrals. We sit in the middle of 5 million USAA members. Last year, we found 30 of them and put them into the system. 30 is not a large percentage of 5 million. 
Um, our goal is much, much, much bigger than 30. We fail on this goal, and we need to not fail on this goal. And the way that we're going to watch it is we're going to say, hey, if we want to do a settlement, not everything's going to turn into a settlement. We probably need two placements in order to do a settlement. We certainly have to be willing to ask the question, what, what lender are you using? If it's NFCU or USAA, then that should trigger us that they are USAA and NFCU members, and those people should absolutely end up in the program. We've got to check the database and, uh, in the office to say, hey, was this a former USAA client that we had five years ago? They probably should go back into the program. Friends and family, you know how we track that. You know, We look at the four placements and say, if we're putting placements in every quarter, it's going to turn into transactions, and it has. We've grown there. Um, we want to demonstrate that we include this in everything that we do. And on your own, you should be tracking, hey, how many marketing pieces do I send about this? And you know, is it really included? Is it in my taglines? Is it in my listing presentation? Do I take every opportunity that I can to tell people about it? Um, treating every interaction like you're speaking with the president of the company, that's how you make people feel like they're supported as your partner. And when they feel they're supported as your partner, they'll continue to choose us over the competition, and that's good for us all. Finally, deliver a memorable experience that will encourage our customers to refer more business to us. Sounds different to me than excellent service, but it's the same thing. Um, it, but it's really why we're doing things. In order to deliver great service, you've got to be prepared and organized up front. You've got to have your head clear. The world wins at you. You're busy. You've got a lot of customers. They can't know that. You've got to be there, in the moment, listening, understanding their needs. Then you communicate your expectations back to them. Once you've established that, you want to check in with the customer all the time. You've got to know your limitations and when it might be time to go back to your branch leader and say, you know, they have a different need than they originally did. Maybe I'm not the right one. Maybe you could get me somebody different. And finally, you know, if you're doing all those things, that's when you can provide the wow. And we talked about Jeff Wu. He does a great job of the wow. But don't focus just on the wow. You've got to have all these other things, all your ducks in a row, and then you can provide the wow. The lead and the lag measures, we know about the surveys. It's question number 10. You know, question number one, we need a 10 on the USAA survey. Question number 11, we need an excellent on NFCU. We look at how many, how many surveys are returned. That tells us whether or not we're talking about it. Um, and we look at, you know, how many people said that it was excellent. That tells us if we're doing what we need to be doing. We also want our broker-to-broker -broker referrals to feel great about us. And the Century 21 survey will tell us a lot about that. The feedback that we get from a referring agent and broker tells us a lot about that. Really the one that I would measure if I was an agent is how many, I'd count, how many referrals did I get from business development clients? I'd want to know that answer because that tells me the value of the program and whether or not it's worth it to be in the program. But it also tells me if I'm, if I'm providing a real wow, then they're going to start referring other clients to me. And that's why we really are doing this. For those that work with our, our corporate listings, you know that we are gold to keep our uh, variance, BMA variance, under 5%, our total direct expenses less than 16%, and our days on market less than 90 days. And that's how we get them to feel really good about us. This wows them. Kerry wows them all the time, and we won in every one of those categories last year, and we're going to do it again this year. Keys to this, it's just consistency. It's every customer, every single time. Stephen Covey says that success comes through sacrifice. It's not easy, and we've got to make a choice every day. There's the pain of discipline versus the pain of regret. I love that slide. Stephen Covey says you've got to choose the power of discipline. That's choosing success, and that's how we get the results that we want to have. With that, I leave you. I should be landing on a plane from Alaska right now. Have a fantastic July. Do really, really well. I hope one or two of the principals will just remind you of the stuff that you already know and that during a busy time, we go back to and make sure that we're focused on the things that will make us successful. Have a great day.